Greetings to everyone, Blackshaw here, welcome back to another episode of the Hunter Call of the Wild, aka, when it comes to my series, Walking Simulator and enjoying the great uh, sights. So, we did explore every vista as an vantage point, uh, points of interest and fast travel points in uh, Hirschfeld Hunting Reserve, Leighton Lake District, which happened like a few years ago, met the Taiga as well. We did Savannah recently. And we also went with Parque Fernando. So, uh, now we're moving on to Yukon Valley. I'm pretty sure I didn't touch upon that map before. Probably apart from doing the usual stuff uh, with walking around or running around with super speed. Thank fuck for the uh, available trainer. Uh, we're gonna do the initial quest, I suppose. Welcome to Yukon Valley, Chichiko. From up here, you're able to see almost the entire reserve. This looks like the spot to set the plane down. I'll pull up to the jetty and you can climb out. Now, good luck to you out there. Don't forget, I'm only a radio call away. I'm quite certain that you're the part of the puzzle that we've been missing out here. While I deal with paperwork and people, you're gonna be my eyes and ears on the ground. We're gonna be a strong team. I just know it. Welcome to Alaska. Let's see. Enjoy your time out in the reserve. Hmm. Confident that someone of your ability will find their way around. No okay, problem. it doesn't feel that the map is big. Look forward to seeing the results of your hunts. Since you've just arrived, there's a couple of places nearby that I'd like you to visit. You can probably see the lookout tower just up the hill from where I dropped you off. Yeah, we're running on top, high. You'll get a great view of the surrounding area. There's also an outpost close to the tower. It's always good to know where you can rest your head after Again, I'm having work, to disable right? the fast uh, the speed because otherwise sure I would never be visitors. able to. I don't mind um, which one you travel to first, but I'd like you to stop get off that at tower. both sides. Once you're up top, enjoy the view. These towers are used mostly for firewatch duties. But when I'm at the top of one, normally I just want to put my feet up and enjoy the tranquility. I haven't had a chance to do that in a long time, though. You at the top? Can you see the outpost from there? I normally do a routine check of an outpost after we've had visitors. All it takes is a forgotten half-eaten sandwich, and suddenly you have curious animals coming to investigate. Bears are temperamental neighbors, and you don't want them knocking on the door asking to borrow some sugar. Welcome I mean, that's to also Lager's looking Point. very nice. A hundred years ago or so, felled trees would be dragged down there. Then teams would strip them down and roll them into the river. Then they'd be bundled up and towed out to the sawmills. The outpost sits on top of the old workers' campsite. I know it might seem trivial, but can you take a look at the trash can and make sure that it's locked? It's a bear-proof trash can with a tricky catch. I don't want to take any chances. People often struggle to lock these heavy-duty trash cans, but if they leave it just a little bit open, all sorts of trouble could come sniffing around. I think we got lucky this time. Thanks for taking care of that. Oh, one last thing. Before you move on, can you take a look at the firewood inside the cabin?
completely wrong way, I suppose, but it worked out. I always get a shiver when people tell stories about these guys. I mean, we still have to, like, go all the way around, so I think that's how we gonna play it off. We'll have to go all the way around. And to be fair, the sides here are also very nice. I mean, there, there is one thing that this game delivers is absolutely gorgeous looks. I know the OBS preset I'm using just to save my PC is not the greatest. Like, the quality of the recording will not be super duper great, but it is what it is. have all the signs of a beetle infestation. Let me see if I can check in with the hunters who must have cut the firewood. I have the number for their satellite phone in the log somewhere. I'll get back to you. Ah, I, I just found the number. I knew I had it here somewhere. I'll give the hunters who stayed here a call and see what they have to say. I'll call you back in a moment after I've landed. from the hunters yet. I'll keep trying. There's an outpost in the forest to your northwest. If you follow the trail, you'll find it. I have a hunch that... Oh, phone's ringing. I'll call you back when I get some answers from these guys about where they cut the wood. Head to the forest outpost in the meantime. I'll bet that's where they were. Yeah, only minus is that a lot of flakes, so... Uh, let's see, Harmony supply is getting a little bit lower, so let me just do this. And now, no problem. Sounded like a bear. Now, uh, yeah, let's go for this one. Yeah, definitely heard me. I think for the forest, we def we just want to find a path across. The lake. Yeah, those are the bears. Dangerous animals if they go out in the open. The wilds, you are gonna be in a world of hurt. There's a few 
few of these bridges dotted around the reserve. Ai, ai, ai. Ele... Yeah, definitely pathways that are not usable for uh, for ATVs, so we'd have to go up there. I think only the power of your, of your legs. That's a nice color. Disabling that, so I don't clip through the freaking. the floorboards ah but they don't really often that much in terms of like stuff you need to discover hmm want to I mean the next quest uh, does this, so I might as well, right? That was a nice group of animals. Okay, so there is something that we didn't... Okay, so again, this is like another reminder that uh, the watchtowers do not reveal everything. But again, as long as I found everything that I could have found that showed me on the map, I am happy with the result I got. Now, let us fast travel to here. Then we go to the objective. And later to our own marker. So we're going to that one no matter away thing first. Once you get up there, take a look in the cabin. There should be a backpack with some supplies in it. When you find it, just grab the whole pack. That's the one. Once you're done at the outpost, take a look in the surrounding forest. Can you find any fallen trees in that area? Ah, the spruce bark beetles are a massive threat to Alaska's spruce forests at the moment. 
We haven't been hit as badly compared to some other Alaskan state parks. But I think that it may be time for a quarantine. This is the one. Okay, in that pack you should have a canister of paint and a nozzle attachment. Use them to paint a big pink X on the tree. And let's take a look around to make sure the beetles haven't started to spread. If you see a spruce in the immediate vicinity of the fallen tree, mark it. And our forestry team will come out and take care of it. If it's untouched, they can just spray it with pesticides to protect it. If it's already infested, then they'll cut it down and haul it away for burning. Okay, so once you find a fallen tree, I want you to take a look at its bark. Does it look healthy? If so, it's probably not the tree we're looking for. Great job. I hope we don't need to cut these trees down, but it's a small price to pay to contain the beetles. There we go. Another tree marked. This reminds me of my summer breaks when I was a kid, helping out my dad at work. He was a tree surgeon down in Washington State. I used to resent him for making me go out there and work while my friends played back home. Eventually, those trips also included hunting lessons, and that made them my favorite parts of the summer. A blight. We won't let the beetles get a foothold in our reserve. That should do. I'll get in touch with the foresters. They can investigate the area and cut down what they need to. I'll make sure that they also pick up the firewood at Loggers Point. Don't want to take any chances. Thanks for taking care of this. It's becoming a full-on phobia of mine that these beetles are going to destroy the forest here. We sprayed pesticides across the western edge of the forest as a preventative measure earlier this month. But any new chemicals in the air, soil, or water make me uneasy. In the same bag that you found the paint, there should be some plastic sample containers. Could you bring them out to the musk... Oh, sorry. I mean wetlands? Muskeg is the word we use up here in Alaska. And time and time again the sights and looks of this is looking gorgeous that's the Right, right path I'm taking, but I think sometimes if you go like too uphill, you will not be able to get to a place you want. And of course, if I hit a freaking tree or something, I get bounced back. Now let's get back to this, then I'm just gonna fast travel to the other one.
so we got this. Um, they don't really reveal much, to be honest. As in, when I looked at it, those uh, not waypoints, the observation posts don't really reveal that much area, at least on this map. But it's fine, we can deal with this. You're gonna be grabbing some samples out there. So one of our research teams can test the pesticides to make sure they aren't having any effect on the ecology. This was actually my wife Sandy's idea. She runs the Yukon Valley Nature Center. So she's working closely with a visiting research team. Welcome to Yukon Valley's wetlands. The last time I brought both of my daughters here to spot birds, they told me that all the bird spotting in the world wasn't worth the smell. Turned out that a bear had left a rotting moose carcass in the summer sun. I decided to spot birds somewhere else, just in case the bear came back for seconds. Watch your footing at the water's edge. It can be easy to slip and fall in. Just fill one of the containers you have with water. Nicely done. First time I was there, I misjudged how stable the edge of a pond was and ended up with one leg knee deep in the water. I was a rookie at the time, and luckily nobody saw it happen. Can you grab a second sample from a body of water slightly further away from the forest? The pesticides we're using on the forest to prevent beetle infestation are effective, but I still have my doubts about the effects on other wildlife. The flats are one of our most biodiverse regions, so I can't risk introducing anything dangerous into the water or the food chain. Great. That should do for water samples. Next up, I need you to find me some animal droppings in this region. Mm, I... The musk keg is a hotbed of animal activity, so you should no, find not droppings gonna quite that. Can you take some samples from the water beside the forest first? We sprayed a section of the forest western edge last month, so I want to know if anything has changed since then. If the pesticides have drifted out to the flats, I want to know if it's making it into the food chain. It's been a month since we sprayed, so there's been plenty of time for the pesticides to get out here. Right, time to head back for those relocations. I mean, I'm finding tracks and whatnot, but I'm unable to find freaking animal living. Shit. Are you serious? Apparently you are serious. I mean, I used a shotgun. Freak me! I, that was not not the weapon I was supposed to. to provide food, yeah, no. Clothing. The herds are a fraction of their former size nowadays. Not many non-natives get to hunt them.
I used the wrong gun, wrong weapon. Really? You do not have anything? Oh well, whatever. a sample from a different species as well it's better to grab a larger sample size while you're already there in the field that should do it now we'll be able to tell if anything larger than a fly is ingesting chemicals that we should be worried about it's hard work wading through the musk cake huh i have a spot where you can drop the samples off and i can easily pick them up oh i just remembered I've been speaking with my wife about the work you've been doing, and she mentioned a few tasks that she has on her plate that I think you could help her with. I gave her your number, so expect to hear from her. She's working on some very important studies at the moment. Hang on a second. I'm getting a call. Okay, I'm back slight change of plans. Before you drop off the samples, I need you to grab a hatchet from the outpost at the western edge of the flats. We have a bit of a situation out in the northwest corner of the reserve, and you're perfectly placed to take care of it. It looks like storms have weakened the roots of a tree, which is about to collapse onto the train tracks. Let me know when you grab the hatchet. Sides are great. Simple as that. Wait, what am I supposed to retrieve? A hatchet? Oh, this. You got the hatchet? Great. I hope our visitors haven't been using it to open their beans. You're gonna need a nice sharp edge. It's small. But it should do the job. Oh boy, how do There's I... There's a lake just to the north of the flats. I'll be flying over it on my way home. If you drop that stuff off there, I can jump out, grab it, and get it to one of our ecological research teams today. Instead of you having to walk around with a bag full of droppings and swamp water. Would you look at that, Pierre? Going in the same direction. Well, almost. Yukon Valley has its fair share of folklore. The stories are almost always creepy. Samples ready for pickup? Fantastic. I'll be over that way as soon as I can. I really appreciate the assistance. 
hunting for droppings and wading into swamp water might not be glamorous or exciting, but it's part of a massive effort to maintain the balance of life out here. It makes a big difference. Hmm. You ready to head out to the tracks? Just I mean, knowing that tree is hanging already, over the so. train track is making me anxious. It's a little bit of a hike, but it's worth it to see the rail bridge. Let me know once you've found the tree. With any luck, it won't take you long to clear it out of the way. You're getting close to the tree that's threatening to fall onto the tracks. I'm guessing it was loosened in a recent storm. Yukon Valley tends to get a few lightning storms each summer, but we do a thorough job of preparing. So we only saw a couple of small fires that went out on their own. I've only ever seen one landslide in person, and that was from the air. Even from up there, it was a shocking display of natural force. It was all I could do to land the plane before the storm overtook me. Hmm. It's hard to tell what caused this tree to tip over. I guess the big question is how to do this properly. <sighs> but I trust you to get the job done. I hope you can make do with a hatchet. Great work out there. The train is a behemoth. I honestly don't think a single tree would do more than dent it in a collision. But I'd rather not take the chance and risk a serious accident. Some of my team are still recording the after effects of the storms. I've heard reports of huge trees with deep roots that are now at precarious angles and might need to be cut down. We're lucky to have such isolated incidents. Other reserves have reported landslides. That looks like a good spot to take the photo. Speaking of the train, it's due to pass by at any moment. I'd stay clear of the tracks if I were you. Keeping that railroad open is a big responsibility for us. Not only is it essential for a lot of trade out here, but the bridge brings tourists in from all over the place. I'd like a good picture of the bridge. One that we can put on our website. See if you can snap it while the train is passing over it. That'll look great. That's the shot we needed. I used to come out to this corner of the reserve with my family. We'd spend long weekends camping, and I'd teach my youngest daughter, Kara, how to shoot. My older daughter, Deanna, was still an angry teenager who needed convincing to take part in any activity. She'd always be laughing and having fun by the end of the trip, though. It's a shame we couldn't catch it with the train on top, but it's still good. Those trips are some of my favorite memories. It brought us all closer as a family. Being alone, together. I'll send this picture over to Sandy. Her team takes care of the Yukon Valley website. I'm, I'm like, hell no, I'm not waiting for a freaking train. Next up, head over to an outpost that we're replacing. Not too far from where you are just now. The cabin was lost in the Tecon forest fire two years ago. Oh, would you look at that? And we're in the process of replacing it with a temporary trailer, equipped with some more modern facilities. Due to the level of damage that was sustained by this area of the reserve, it has attracted several researchers who would like to perform long-term studies in the region. The Tecon forest will host our first research outpost trial. Oh, and in case you're unaware, Tikan is the native word for wolf. The fire destroyed part of the forest, but the wolves are still out there. I'd make sure you keep your rifle fully loaded at all times while you're in wolf country. I look forward to your call when you find the outpost. I saw the fires that tore through that forest, and I still struggle to accept just how quickly the landscape can transform into smoldering ash. Believe it or not, we got lucky. It could have been a lot worse. Maybe lucky. We lost too much. This is the Basri Memorial Outpost. Or at least it will be, once you get it up and running. Ranger Crawford has left the supplies that we need for the finishing touches. 
He was going to set it up himself, but his wife went into labor just as he got here, so he had to rush back to town. The workstations look like they're ready to go. If this trial goes well, we might see more researchers setting up camp across the reserve. For now, though, let's get things powered up. The supplies will include fuel for the generator. Just stick a little fuel in the generator and fire it up. And we're in business. Good. I'll let our researchers know they're welcome to visit when they're ready. Of course, you can sleep here and restock your supplies, just like any other outpost. We can limit the fires that are being started by people, but the lightning strikes where it wants. The outpost is just the first part of our restoration efforts. The supplies should contain a couple of things that you're going to need for your next job. Planting new saplings. Take the bag of spruce saplings and the shovel. And let me mark a spot for you on your map. Nah, I'm good. We did enough of the freaking uh, objectives. It's at least a tough for now. road ahead for this part of the reserve. The fire burnt away a huge chunk of the forest. But with any luck, a program of replanting will gradually bring life back. I hope to see it happen in my lifetime. Yeah, wildfires are dangerous thing. No joke. Actually, this one is closer. Yeah, yeah, moose. Then there is a question in which direction. Really, no, let's screw it. Let's let's deal with that quest. <laughs> 